Hey, thanks, Sam. You know, uh, I'm so glad to have all of you listening in today. And, and John and I have talked in the past about the fact that one of the most common questions that comes up is, do we have to offer accounts for minors? And the answer to that is, from a legal standpoint, no. It's a business choice, just like your institution could decide, you know what, I don't think we'll open checking accounts for anybody anymore. So you can you can pick and choose what your product mix is, and when it comes to minors, you can say, we have made a business decision that we aren't going to open accounts for minors for whatever reason, but I'm going to take a an educated guess that because you're tuning in today, that means that you are open to the possibility. Maybe you have always offered accounts for minors and you just want to tweak your program a little bit. And and I applaud your decision because let's face it, it's not just adults that have assets. People who are under the age of 18 can also have money for whatever reason. And even if they don't have money at the present point in time, they represent the future. And if you can make customers out of these people at an early point in their lives and give them a positive experience, they may end up being customers for life. So in terms of what we're going to talk about today, if you turn over to um, to page one of the materials, uh, we're going to go through the, um, the manual today, and we're going to talk about, okay, what are your options in terms of accounts for for minors um, having an account that is in the name of the minor, having a joint account between a minor and an adult, what the uh, problems are with having an account that's styled minor by. We're going to illustrate the types of state laws that you are likely to to run across and emphasize to you that you need to know what your particular state law says, and we're going to talk uh, talk just a bit about those state laws, what the reasons are that you may want to allow a joint account with a minor and an adult or not allow such an account, and the kinds of things that you can do if you allow those accounts to give the maximum protection to the bank. We're going to talk about accounts under the Uniform Transfers to Minors Act and tell you why those are an important part of your product mix. And then in suitability, we'll examine what type of account is right depending upon what the situation of the minor is. We'll talk about uh, how you set up a UTMA account, if that's what you decide to do, other UTMA issues. And then we're back to kids have money too. So I'm going to kick it over to John to talk about where would that money come from? (laughs) Oh, well, kids have more money than their parents would like to believe sometimes. Uh, they get it from gifts, of course, and this uh, appropriate time of the year to be talking about that, I guess. And kids get money for, for Christmas. They get money for Hanukkah. They get money for birthdays. They get money for, oh, all sorts of occasions. Um, they may come into money through an inheritance, too, through, a, through a, a grandparent or a favorite aunt or uncle that has passed away or it, Heaven forbid that one of their parents has passed away, so they can get money through the, through an inheritance, through the courts, uh, through a probate court, through a will, or or what have you. Um, they might actually get a court settlement. Um, for instance, a, a child can have a tort judgment uh, found in his or her favor, uh, and there might be a situation where the child has been injured in an automobile accident, or there's a 
a problem with a medical treatment that results in um, a judgment in the child's favor, and those those monies uh, would be uh, would belong to the child as well. And yes, uh, some children actually earn their money the old-fashioned way, as the old uh, E.F. Hutton uh, uh, was it E.F. Hutton, Mary Beth. Uh, I think in any it may event, have been. Um, the old uh, commercial uh, used to go. Uh, they might have, um, they might deliver newspapers, they might wash cars, they might, uh, you know, they might actually have an allowance, uh, or they might have uh, do odd jobs and mow lawns and so forth while they're still minors. And the so, reason you even care about uh, the source of the funds is that's going to play an integral part in in dis- helping you decide along with your customer what the best type of account setup is. Uh some of these accounts will as we as we'll talk about later will beg for having uh, for being set up under the UTMA. Um others may just be a garden variety account that you offer to to kids. Um uh, but you need to know um that all of that money out there in the hands of, of uh, people under the age of majority um, may actually be attractive to you as a bank. Um, as Mary Beth mentioned, uh, if they don't have money now, hopefully they'll have money later. So if you get an early uh, an early connection with those kids with their with deposit accounts, um, then you may stand a chance of having their later more attractive and more profitable business as they. As they grow up and and uh, and enter into the community as adults, uh, one thing you need to make sure you understand is that you know what types of accounts are legal under the laws of your state, and we'll talk at length about uh, that sort of situation. You need to know what the options are available to you, both um, within those laws and outside those laws, possibly, and by. Uh, the most important thing that we want to make sure you understand is that you need to have a policy on what you're going to do as far as opening accounts for minors because uh, this is something that should not go, the bank should not go into lightly. They need to understand the background, they need to understand the law, they need to understand the reason they're offering the, these accounts, uh, and then uh, the bank needs to make sure that it's all of its customer service people understand what those policies are, and that's where staff training comes in. Um, <clears throat> so that's the purpose of this presentation today is to make sure that you have all of that information that you need, uh, although we won't be going into each state's individual laws. We are, as Mary Beth mentioned, going to provide you with three illustrations of three totally different approaches to the question of uh, accounts for minors. One of the things that you need to understand, too, is uh, what it is that best fits the need of the, of the customer here. You want to understand, for instance, the reason an account is being opened, and you want to be able to select the best fit from the customer, from the uh, types of accounts that you offer, uh, for the customer's um, for the customer's uh, benefit. You, you know, there's a huge difference between a situation where you have a newborn baby and people want to contribute money for the baby that can be used later in life, perhaps for educational expenses or whatever, versus a situation where you have a kid who's reached the legal age to work or maybe they're a a whiz kid entrepreneur and they own their own business before they're even 12 years old. And so figuring out accounts in those situations or in a situation where, where someone has money for whatever reason, maybe it's an inheritance that they've received and um, the the kid is about to turn 16 and uh, the remaining parent is afraid that if the money was in an account solely in the child's name, 
that upon their 16th birthday, they'd be down at the motorcycle shop. Uh, 